Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight as we look into our Bible study. It's again a joy and a privilege to come into your home and to, or wherever you are and to study the Word of God together. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's pray one for another, lift our needs up to God in prayer, and then we'll get right on into the Word. Holy Father, we are so appreciative of your love. We thank you for the promise and the encouragement that we can cast our cares on you, that we have not because we ask not. So, Father, right now, I agree with my brother, my sister, and they agree with me that we're going to ask you, believing you, to minister. Father, you know every person that's on our church prayer list. You know every person that's watching today. You know their needs far better than they do. And so, Father, we ask you to show yourself mighty, to show yourself strong. Minister is only you can do. Reveal to us that you are a living, almighty, powerful God, and we'll give you praise for it. Also, we ask you, Lord, to open up our understanding to clarify and clearly hear the voice of the Lord. And God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight I want to go back uh, to the scripture we shared the last time uh, we got together. And it was this happened right prior to God telling Moses, I am who I am. And as you know, we've been looking at the I am's of God. And today we're looking, it says, I am the God of the living. We see in uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, these words. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now you may be saying, well, big deal, that's... Uh, that we know that, but what's the significance of that? Uh, what importance was it? Now, all of us realize when we see a word or phrase in the Word of God, every one of them is insignificant because the Bible says not one dot or one tittle of his word will be uh, wiped out. But we know it's significant when it's said there one time. But this phrase... I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is used 12 times in Scripture, 12 times. There are many others that attribute to this, but word for word, 12 times, and a number of others that are referred to it. Now, what's the significance? Well, anytime God says something 12 times plus, I think we need to kind of get a delve a little bit deeper and see what he's saying. So let's continue reading in chapter 3, verse 14, where he says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. So what's the big deal? Well, actually a whole lot because we serve a living God. That two word phrase living God is used 28 times in the scripture. So the significance, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the living God is very, very significant. Let's go back to that phrase, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus himself enlightens us on this. He recounts it in Matthew, the same story, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the same story. And let's look at those stories and all of them are the, the same basic story, but just a little bit different. But uh, let's look at them beginning with Matthew chapter 22, chapter 22, verse 23. The same day Sadducees came to him who say that there is no resurrection 
and they ask him a question. He goes on to ask him a question about the resurrection. And of course, that's kind of ironic to me because they're asking him about the resurrection, I think trying to prove and validate their statement that there is no resurrection from the dead. So these Sadducees, now, one way to remember the difference between Pharisees and Sadducees, both of those were spiritual groups. Both of them were leaders in the uh, days of Christ. And the main difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees is the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. A good way of remembering that is they are sad, you see, because they do not believe in the resurrection. So, uh, then drop down to verse 31, verse 31, where it says this, Jesus speaking, as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? Now, when did, when was this said? Back over in, in the book of Exodus. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now, go over to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 12, verse 24. Again, the same story dealing with the Sadducees. Is not the reason you're wrong because you know neither the Scriptures nor the power of God. See, they were pulling their thought out of what they thought the Bible said. And Jesus said, you do not know the scriptures, number one. And secondly, you do not know the power of God. See, when you don't know the scriptures, you don't know what it means when he says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't understand that. And if you don't believe in the resurrection or the power of God, Without the power of God, there's no resurrection. So he said, you do err. That's what the King James Version says. You do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of, of thereof. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. So we understand he was addressing the issue of the resurrection of the dead. And he said, you are totally wrong if you do not believe in the resurrection. We find out later on when Jesus was uh, preaching and, and throughout his life, he's telling us the only way we can be saved or to be a child of God is to accept the fact and believe. Now that term believe means believeth on him. It means more than just a head knowledge. It means a, a consent, a trust, a trusting in. And so in order to be saved, we must believe that he is. He is what? He is the God of the uh, father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. Now let's go over to Luke and see what he said about that in the Gospel of Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20, verse 37. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed us in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Jesus said it, and it's recorded in all three of his Gospels. A truth from Exodus all the way through to Revelation talks about that God is the living God and that he is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. When Luke wrote the book of Acts, when Luke wrote the book of Acts, he wrote this in chapter 3, verse 13. Chapter 3, verse 13. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, 
the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for murder to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life. Man, if it ended there, that'd be a terrible thought. You killed the author of life. But aren't you glad the story doesn't end there? Whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. Why was Jesus dead so long? Well, you know, if they would just put him in the uh, grave for a few hours, somebody said, well, you know, he was just in a coma. But he had been in the grave for three days or a part of at least a part of three days. So he was dead. When they went around checking the body, they did not break his legs. Why? Because he was already dead. How do you know? They stuck a spear into his side and water and blood ran out. If he'd have been alive, it had just been blood. So he was totally, completely dead. But God raised him from the dead. When Luke shares Philip's uh, message in John chapter, excuse me, Acts chapter 7, verse 30, says this, Now when 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. What's it going back to? All the way back to the scriptures we read at the beginning of this message in the book of Exodus chapter 6 appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. And when Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not to look. Then the Lord said to him, take off the sandals from your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Verse 34, I've surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their groaning and I've come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Now I realize that was Jesus, or excuse me, God giving a special message to uh, Moses to go back to uh, Israel and to bring his people out. But I want to emphasize the fact that he says, I've seen their problems. And if you read over in the book of uh, Exodus, it says he was moved with compassion. He heard their prayers. When Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, what did he say? Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, how often would I've gathered you? Now, what brought that on? According to scripture, Jesus was moved with compassion. He was moved with such a burden that he wanted to do something and knew he had to do something. And that something was to die for the sins of the world. That would have been a neat story just to know that someone wanted to be a hero and was willing to give their life for someone. But Jesus was doing a lot more than that. He was proclaiming the truth that he was not the God of the dead. He was God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we know, lived and died, but God will raise them from the dead just like he'd will us at the proper time. We will be raised from the dead. So we know that God says he is not the God of the uh, dead, but of the living. And he is a living God. So think about it. Those two thoughts. The living God is also the God of the living. That means if we have put our faith and trust in him, that a God that could not die, a God that had the power of the resurrection, a God that loved us with such an 
everlasting, eternal love, that he would send his son to die so that we would not have to die that horrible death for our sins. And Jesus said it at least three times. Throughout the Bible, the truth is that he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Even before uh, uh, Moses, we find where uh, I, or Jacob, rather, was telling us that for the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac, God is an awesome God. And Paul probably says it best in the book of Corinthians, was he said, without the resurrection, our faith is useless. Friend, if, we, if the resurrection is not true, I'm wasting your time, wasting my time, trying to share with you because it's on a fairy tale. But how many knows that it's not a fairy tale? It's the real truth that Jesus Christ died and rose again and that we too will rise again. We too will rise again. A lot of things we don't understand. We may have a lot of differences of opinion, but we need to understand something that God, the living God, is also the God of the living. So we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to rejoice in Him because He's already our God. First John says, Beloved, even now we're the sons of God. I'm so thankful that I am a child of God, that I am a child of the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. I'm also glad that when he sees us, he is moved with compassion. Did Israel deserve it? No. Do we deserve it? No. But God loves us anyway. And he reaches out to you today and to me today and telling us, I am the God of the living. What does that mean for us today? That means that we have access to the almighty God. We can approach the throne of grace, the Bible says, boldly because he died for us. So can I encourage you today just to be encouraged by the word? Just be encouraged by the knowledge that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And those Sadducees, they did not believe in the resurrection. So God addressed that issue and he told them point blank. The Bible says they dare not ask anymore because they knew that he was well able to answer their questions because he was not dead. Oh, he was going to die shortly but he was not the God of the dead. He was God of the living. Let's pray again and ask God to reveal this truth to us and clarify in our minds to know that we serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God, a God of the resurrection. Again, as Paul said, without the resurrection, our hope is in vain, but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, and that he is the son of the living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of Daryl Strickland, and the God that you have if you've accepted him as your savior. Let me pray with you. Holy Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for ministering to us and in us and through us. God, help us to sense the authority of who you are, that you are the I am, the not I was or not I will be, but you are I am. And so, Father, we cast our cares on you and ask you to show yourself mighty, show yourself strong, and God, we will give you the praise. We will give you the honor, and we will give you the glory for it. In Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name, Amen and amen. Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.